What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday, happy Sunday. I believe this is going out on Sunday. My days are all jumbled up again. Well, just got back in. It was well, actually probably about four hours ago from the Lexington, Kentucky card show. It's week two, uh, five weeks straight setting up at a card show. And no, this isn't some type of like challenge or anything like that, but there's so many mixed videos that I come across or get linked to or emailed or whatever about all these deals and all this money floating at shows. I can tell you I've set up in Louisville and Lexington both multiple times, so I have an idea what I was selling, uh, COVID time frame, pre-COVID time frame, and now after, what we're going to call 2022 uh, after COVID, even though it's still around and trickling every which way. But Week two of it all. Um, I did get a little bit of footage this time while I was there. Uh, I was set up with a couple, well, one, one, two, three other guys that I know. I didn't think how many that were there this time. And I'm rotating in and out with them all week, or for the next five weeks at different shows uh, with their tables and everything. And I do thank them because they're bringing me in because they already have tables and stuff like that there. So I don't have to try to see a sold out show and be put on a wait list and all that fun stuff like that. Overall, for Lexington, not bad, not bad at all. A um, lot of nice cards were there. Uh, I'm going to show about a minute worth of clip here, and then I'll show you what I picked up, and then we'll talk about trends. Because it's always good to see the difference between locations, areas, types of shows, and stuff like that there. And just to see how many people out there are really fluffing or pumping up uh, some of these deals that are going on out there. All right, guys, be back here in about a minute. Alright guys, pretty cool cards I saw there. Um, I wanted to get another guy's display case, but it was like, oh, probably about two-ish. And everybody was packing up, and I didn't want to have somebody stop what they're doing for video footage. So, two deals of the day. Um, first one I did real early with a guy I always buy from at the shows. And a lot of times I get stuff just for whatnot. Uh, just another source to sell and another avenue or platform out there. You guys know that. So I'll go through the whatnot stuff, but this one was included in the deal. This is going to go out and get graded. Colton Kowser, you guys know how I feel about Bowman's Best. I think it's a very undervalued card until the guy gets called up, does something, then they shoot up to crazy amounts. But I figured I'd pick this up in a deal. The blue out of 150. Looks pretty, pretty good shape. Maybe 10. I haven't really looked it over or anything. But I took, oops, sorry guys. Hit take a chance at it. All right, so we wanted the fun. This stuff here, I don't know about Lindros if it's going to go and whatnot or not. But these were the old promotional, like, metal cards from Don Russ, I believe. I'll flip it on the back here in a second. Saw it. Haven't seen one of these done in a long time. Eric Lindros, not too many people remember him. He was a phenomenal hockey player. Um, especially when you have the Pittsburgh-Philadelphia, you know, battles back and forth. Definitely remember him pretty well. And you can see promotional card in the back. Who is Don Russ? Yep. Don Russ. I'll pull it up right there. Don Russ. So you don't see these really coming out that much anymore. And it's very, very rare. They still have this protective film on it. And I figured, what the heck I'm going to get? I don't know if I'm going to keep it or if I'm going to sell it. Eventually one day, though, upon retirement, I will be selling it all. But something I kind of like from my childhood. The rest of this stuff for sure. Two Joey Burrows, 
These are them uh, mosaic blue retro or retro reactive. Wow, reactives. Uh, DK Metcalf NT out of was that ninety nine patch? I think this is twenty twenty one. I am completely way off. That's twenty nineteen. Wow. Uh, some low end Herbert rookies because everybody's always asking for Herbert. Clear Vision rookie. This is second year, same thing, that blue reactive. Another Herbert. Not a rookie, I don't think. No. Uh, a couple of LeBron James Goodwin champions. I like it because you can still get some of the artists you can't get elsewhere when they do produce it, like Jordan and um, LeBron, stuff like that there. Old Fleer tradition, Bryant, O'Neal, Harper, Ryder, and Horry. I remember this card. I figured I'd pick it up. Uh, T. Higgins. This is Illusion. Double patch. That's uh, what? 99. Vessel. Mosaic. Rookie autographs. I know there's some guys that like him. And DeAndre Hunter as well, too. But if you're following me on whatnot, I'm not... You probably won't ever see me do mid or high end on there type deal. It's just stuff like that there. I pick it up on, you know, the cheap. And then I put it up in there starting at a dollar like go cheap. For guys who are out there collecting them, some people like to pick it up, then hurry up and move it, or a.k.a. the new terminology, evil word, flip. So, all right, last deal. Um, and then I'll go over what I sold, too. Well, let me talk about what I sold. So I only sold four cards, I think, total. The 88 Fleer Malone uh, sold today the PSA 8, 9. I think it was 9. I, I have to go back and look. I think it came back at 9. It, it's only worth like 20-some bucks. So that's sold. I end up selling the Carmelo Anthony Auto, the PSA 7, that upper deck one for I think like 110 And then the Bobby Orr Auto and it was a PSA 8 that came back. What was something? Oh, with the Brett Favre BGS non that one in a uh, Raz raffle, whatever you want to call it. I think I, I sold that for two eighty or something. I'd have to go back and look, but that there paid for this here. Now my thoughts were going into the show that I was just going to go as a buyer, but I was like, heck, if I could set up and sell something, you know, hey, you know, it's less money out of my pocket type deal. Plus, I really wasn't planning on setting up this week in Lexington. I was looking somewhere else. But let's show you this. Dominic Wilkins. Auto. His stuff to me is really cheap for autographs. And this is like one of the original. I think it is the original. Yeah. No, no. I take it back. Second year prism. Autograph of Dominic Wilkins. It looks pretty good shape when I looked at it. But as much as like all these Hall of Famers that have all these crazy career stats and stuff that get talked about. Dominic Wilkins is one I'm just really shocked that doesn't hold a lot of value. So what I see is stuff I pick it up occasionally. It is off sticker and stuff. And, you know, it's still a nice thing to pick up. It was basically a throw-in because of the next card. Because I want somebody to make me feel good <laughs> about buying it. So as you see what I got rid of, this is what I picked up. This was the centerpiece of it all. There we go. I think it was 2004, if I remember right. Let me look real quick. No, 2002 Fleer. Barry Bonds. This is an autograph once I get to focus. There we go. You got the dual bat piece into it. BGS 9 sold for like 600 onto this card. And, yeah, I picked it up pretty much for what I sold today. And it's really good shape. I mean, there's a little bit of whiting right down here. It's not much. I'm thinking it's a strong 8. Very slight chance it comes back a 9. It could. Who knows? But I'm pretty sure it's going to be an 8 on to this. But it's really a nice car because he does not have a lot of autographs out there compared to a lot of the other stars. He hasn't signed in a long time. And I've been trying to pick up some Bonds autographs on eBay. Every time I even put my max bid over comps like 30, 40, 50 bucks, I still get outbid. This is actually hand numbered out of 600. Surprisingly, he signed 600 of these. But you don't see this stuff really pop up that much anymore. And I wanted to get one just to have type deal. I'll probably, uh, like I said, this will probably go on. Oh, it's going to go get graded just so you can get slabbed. But I'm looking to probably pick a couple more up and then try to keep one out of the batch that I end up keeping um, for a while. 
But pretty cool, though, picking this up. I know Greg's going to be like, ooh, that's a cool card. But I looked at this, I thought it was a lithograph at first. Now that was just a wood, then I happened to see authentic autograph. I'm like, wait a minute here. And it really is, you just, it's just the way that they did it back in the day. It's just really, really nice. But yep, that's the highlight of what I picked up today. I was almost going to pick a trout uh, auto up, and I kind of backed down. Just because I didn't really keep coming out. I'm really spending a lot more than what I was selling there type deal. You guys might end up seeing that trout autograph within the next month or so down the line once me and the other guy reconnect to the show. All right. So, as you guys seen, I pretty much pushed out what I sold. Louisville show. I was at like 210 in sales. Again, there's no dot value boxes I'm bringing. No wax. It's just straight two showcases. Uh, mostly all graded cards, $15 up to, I think, highs like $1,200. A few couple up in there like that. And last show, if it wasn't for the Big Ben, uh, Rookie Auto, that it was a deal from prior shows that I didn't get a chance to close. So I had to leave early as a dealer. Um, it would have been very bad for sales that day. What I have noticed at both shows, value boxes are just boom. That people are buying, picking through, you name it. Stacks of that stuff. Um, the higher end somewhat moves if the person's willing to go under comps. I hate using the word comps, but under recent sell prices. And, de and depending on the platform and trying to tell people that when you see something sold on eBay, that card may not have been paid for. And you got to really use Terapeak onto it. They're not liking that at all. Especially when guys are bringing cards around, they're trying to sell, and there's like two comps at like 300, one at 500. And I'm like, that 501, what didn't get paid for? Well, it's still sold. No, it didn't get paid for. So I will say that there offhand. Uh, a lot of the high, I didn't see a whole lot of high end moving. There were a few. I don't think anybody, you know, was selling thousand dollars in you know, thousand dollar plus cards that much out there. There might have been one, two, or three that got sold compared to other shows. But value boxes, people wanted to buy under current sales, of course. And their whole reason when they do this, and I'm t this is the funniest part ever. Well, it's sold on eBay for this, and if you sold on eBay, you're only gonna get eighty seven percent. If that's the first thing that comes out from somebody telling me that, you could, I, I can tell you now, pretty much, I'm not selling to you, regardless, because here's the thing. If I if you had to buy that on eBay, you're going to pay that full price. At the same time frame, you're going to end up paying sales tax if you're in a state that has sales tax. And you got to pay for shipping, I'd probably say, 90% of the time. And you don't get to see the card in person. So there, there's it's a double-edged sword onto that stuff there. Um, it's just funny the way people try to tweak it always into their favor onto it. I could see the undercurrent sales price for what I call the highly pop counts for PSA, Becca cards, or you know stuff that's plentiful. But when you have that only card in the room... Uh, that's a hard one there. And when you go look on for current ones for sale, if they're way up high or there's none out there, you know, you're going to have to pay what the guy wants for it across the board onto it. it just That's just the one thing that I see a lot of people, they want to get it so dirt cheap to hurry up, buy it, then make a profit onto it. It's, it's that quick profit that I think is going to end up stopping here. I don't want to say before the national because I know that's going to be a big game game changer with however whatever dictates up there, and if for a few months after. But by the end of the year, I think a lot of those quick buy and hurry up and sell it's going to end up stopping uh, as much as we see onto it. And somebody in one of the uh, I think it was yet today's video or yesterday's video, one of the videos recently, we were taught he was talking about it. And the whole thing is, is that when you look at the total um, hobby as a whole or whatever, however terminology that you want to use on to it, a lot of this stuff is going to go up and down on player performance 
you know, and stuff like that there. And at the same time frame, I mean, I had, a, I, w I was going to tape the one conversation for you guys. We were talking about autographs. And there's certain players that have the special autographs. You can look at a table, and you're like, oh, I know who that is, without even looking at the player's name. And there's other ones, it's just a bunch of chicken scratch onto it. And <laughs> I've been one of them guys that always prefer the nicer autograph onto a card. And that's what I've picked up for years and years and years. Like, here's an example. Colton Couser, it's actually kind of decent, you know, with at least you could see CC on. Some guys like Dalvin Cook just put DC on the card, some just a bunch of scratches. And I think it deals with a lot with how the school systems are. Some school systems don't even teach uh, cursive writing anymore. And you look at Barry Bonds, you could tell if you've been around for a while, that's Barry Bonds' signature onto it and stuff like that. Um, I mean, like Dominic Wilkins and stuff. Bunch of lines. I wouldn't know that's Dominic Wilkins' auto. Uh, some of the guys, they get older, you know, that's one thing I always look at when I'm buying because, you know, they're not going to be around forever. How many autographs they have out there? Like, a lot of people said that with Hank Aaron, and they hurry up and rushed after he passed away to buy Hank Aaron autos. But I always look for stuff that's really distinguishable, especially for myself, that I know who that player is without having to try to look all over the card onto it and stuff. Some of the other trends I've seen, uh, and it, this is no knock at people for this, uh, especially dealers. Uh, sometimes I don't see prices on cards at all. They're looking up every single card. The other part of it, and I understand if you're setting up each week, changing out stickers and all that can get hectic. So you just look up <laughs> current sales and try to figure out what you want to get for it. I've also noticed dealers not showing up that had tables to showing up an hour after the show starts. I mean, there any reason could happen. I mean, car problem, traffic, long drives, whatever. But I just noticed that as being a big thing at the show so far. And that's even the ones I, weren't set, I wasn't set up at. But overall, like I said, value boxes. And if you're willing to cut deals at like 60 70% of recent sales, oh, it's, it's going to sell quick. It will sell quick. Uh, regardless of how, whatever that card is, it could be mm, PSA 10, Wanda Franco, first Bowman, to a Joe Montana auto. If you're going to sell it way under, under sales, people are going to buy it. Because they just want to hurry up and make that quick profit margin onto it. And the thing that's you know, getting bad is that everybody considers themselves a dealer out there, but... A lot of people don't have the dealer credentials, such as licensing and everything else out there. But, you know, a lot of this is due to just during COVID, people showing all these massive deals across the board. And, you know, oh, I made $2,000 profit off this deal. But in the end, I'm always one of the people at the end of the year profits type. They always have been. As long as I'm in the positive, I'm happy on to it. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for the trends that I've seen out there. Um, if you had value box at your table, you were going to have people stopping by. They sit there and they, st you know, stay at your table longer because they got to go through this stuff. But I, I'm staying away from it. I just want to stick straightly to uh, just two display cases onto and just to see how things go differently across the board onto it. So another three weeks uh, left. Salem, Indiana, then Louisville again at that show that I just came from or did uh, two weeks ago because they had to run it earlier for June and then we'll do Newburgh, Indiana, which is going to be a good one because of the other shows that are going on during that time frame. I believe it's both Dallas and Indy are both going the same time frame. I can't remember. No, no, I take it back. Dallas just went. But it's pretty much it, everybody. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Again, I'm just going to give uh, one of these card shows the things that I've noticed that are going on out there that have been different or trends uh, in case people are looking to sell cards and wondering why certain things aren't moving. I really can't tell you because with the videos I watch all the time or catch, I shouldn't say all the time on YouTube, you know, you see a lot of movement of stuff, but. I don't see a lot of movement between the dealers that are to my left, to my right, across from me, behind me. So, could just be the area. 
Could be the size of the show. Could be the promotion of the show. There's a lot that I'll go into. You know, is it going to be a good show? Is it going to be a bad show? But we'll see how the next three weeks pan out. We'll do an overall video on to it. Uh, I'll probably do a little PowerPoint presentation just to make it look cool and everything, I guess, in a way. But other than that, guys, have a good, safe week out there. And I'll catch you guys next video.